Joseph Parker wins a 12-round unanimous decision over Carlos Takam. This was an interesting fight, <laughs> the way it turned out. It wasn't the war that I guess many people had hoped it would be, but it was interesting, it was intriguing, and I think a lot of questions were answered in this fight. Right from the opening bell, a lot of people were taken aback by Carlos Takam's tactics. And nobody more so than Joseph Parker, I think. He did seem pretty surprised by what Takam was doing. Now, we've seen Takam employ similar tactics in other fights. He did it against Mike Perez in the early rounds. He did it against Alexander Povetkin in the early, round, in the early rounds. And that was box on the back foot and counter punch. I never expected Takam, who's only about 6'1", 6'2", to employ these type of tactics against a much taller, much younger, much faster opponent. But he did. He came out first round boxing on the back foot, looking to counter Joseph Parker. And he actually did it successfully in the first round. I gave the first round to Carlos Taka. He was particularly effective with his left hook. And I think Taka and his team had come into this fight thinking, you know what? We need to neutralize Joseph Parker's quick hands. So we need to counter punch him because sometimes he gets a little bit too, you know, a bit too greedy with those combinations and we need to wait until he starts throwing them and encounter with clean effective punches. I think that's what Takam's game plan was going into the fight. And even later on in the fight, when Takam did decide to come forward, he was still kind of doing the same thing. He wasn't going forward and then immediately throwing a lot of punches. He was going forward, waiting for Parker to throw. Then he was countering. Then he would start unloading his combinations. He was doing that a lot, trying to counter punch even on the front foot when he was coming forward. But I have to say, I was disappointed with Carlos Takam's work rate in this fight. We've seen him apply a hell of a lot of pressure in other fights. But in this fight, he was strangely subdued. And there was nowhere near the work rate you would have... You, know, you, you would have wanted to see, see from him. Around the midway stage of the fight, Joseph Parker looked like he was gassing. He looked very tired. And I think, it's not, it's not like Parker had thrown that many punches. He'd thrown a few, but he'd not been particularly active himself. But I think the mental pressure, more than anything, was starting to get to Joseph Parker in the mid-rounds because he had an opponent in front of him who wasn't going to go anywhere, he wasn't going to knock this guy out early, right? He tested Takam's chin a few times and he realized Takam's actually quite awkward to catch clean. <laughs> and he's a very, very big, strong unit, Carlos Takam. So I think that kind of imposing figure in front of Joseph Parker started to tell on him a little bit mentally in the middle rounds. And he did look very tired around the sixth, seventh, eighth round. And there was a moment there, one of those rounds, it might have been a seventh, where... Takam really started imposing himself on Joseph Parker, pushing him back, had him on the ropes. And for just for a few seconds there, it looked like Joseph Parker was maybe starting to fall apart and that Takam might be able to get the job done and take him out of there. But curiously, Takam came out for the next round and gave Joseph Parker all the space in the world to get his breath back and regroup himself. That was very strange from Carlos Takam. Why not press the issue? He obviously didn't have it in the tank himself. Either he badly misjudged the situation and was thinking far too tactically than he should have done and should have just been more impulsive or he didn't have it in the tank himself. One thing I can say, Parker was landing nice body shots. So maybe those body shots took some of the uh, fuel out of Carlos Takam's tank. Maybe that's something to do with it. But once... Takam allowed Parker to survive those tough moments. Parker did, I think, grow in confidence a little bit. In his mind, he felt like I've come through a crisis. And in the eighth round, actually, Joseph Parker unloaded a massive volley on Carlos Takam, probably hoping to take Takam out. It didn't work. And Takam came back at him with a few shots. But I think that moment was the pivotal moment in the fight because Parker himself knew that he was gassed and very tired after that, you know, salvo that he reeled off to try and take Takam out. He knew he was very tired. And when Takam didn't take advantage of it and didn't fully exploit, uh, you know, Joseph Parker's tiredness after that combination, I think in Joseph Parker's own mind, he thought, well, 
if he's not going to press the issue now, after I'm really tired, after throwing a million shots at him, then he's not going to press the issue ever. And I think Parker's uh, confidence went back up after that, after Takam didn't take advantage of that situation. His confidence went back up. And I think his energy stores started to rejuvenate because his confidence was up again. He started flashing a jab a bit more. And yeah, Takam had fleeting moments of success for the rest of the fight. And he probably won the 12th round in all honesty. But still, it was disappointing from Carlos Takam. Not enough pressure. And he really could have done better than that. If he applied the kind of pressure he, he applied to somebody like Tony Thompson, Joseph Parker could have been in a lot of trouble. But he wasn't. Parker did manage to, you know, last the distance and outbox Takam down the stretch and win on the cards a comfortable decision and definitely a deserved decision. And it was a very good learning fight for Joseph Parker. You know, he did take a few shots from Takam. Takam is not a massive puncher, okay? But he did manage to take a few shots on the chin there and he'll, he'll be able to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what mistakes did we make? And Takam did kind of exploit how straight up uh, Joseph Parker stands at times. He is susceptible to counters. But I think Joseph Parker as well, one thing I was impressed with, with Parker is that he realized what Takam was doing early on. He realized that Takam wanted, it to, wanted him to come and commit and start reeling off those combinations so he could catch him. He knew that that's what Takam was doing and he didn't go for the bait. He picked his spots to unload those famous combinations of his quite wisely. Yeah, he didn't just go rushing in because he's got this big slow guy in front of him. No, he picked the spots quite wisely. And talk about slow, Takam was very slow in this fight. He's never been a fast heavyweight, but I've never seen him slower, I don't think, than he was in this fight. And that's surprising given the fact that he came in lighter than we're used to seeing him come in. So he was very slow. In the first round, he was reasonably quick, and that's why he won it on the back foot countering. But as the fight went on, he really, really slowed badly. And it was one round there, I think it might have been the ninth, where it looked like both guys were underwater. <laughs> it looked like you were watching a fight in slow motion. They were both so slow, like especially Takam. It was literally like you, you'd press the slow motion button. Uh, yeah, so it is what it is. It was a deserved victory for Joseph Parker. He'll learn a lot from that. He'll grow a lot from that. But there's still technical errors there, okay, that he needs to correct. Maybe he's going to need a new trainer before he can correct them. I don't know because he's been standing very upright for a very long time now very little head movement. So yeah, but I still like Joseph Parker as a prospect. I still think he's going to be a major player in the heavyweight division going forward, but there's definitely work needed there. Obviously, there's a lot of time before he's going to take that mandatory IBF shot against whoever it is, whether it's Joshua or somebody else. He's got a lot of time before that happens. I'm sure they're going to take some interim fights between now and then. So he needs some more tough guys like that, like a Takam to bring him on to the next level and really prepare him for that world heavyweight title shot, which he should be getting next year sometime, maybe spring next year. So those are my thoughts on the fight, people. Let me know what you thought about this fight and Joseph Parker's performance. What did you think about Carlos Takam's performance? It was a strange, strange, strange performance. Given what we've seen from Takam before, him applying so much pressure and putting on, you know, and, and, and him being more effective, him throwing more volume. Whereas in this fight, strangely subdued and only fighting in spurts. Maybe he's just too old now. You know, maybe age is catching up with him. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.